All right, did you bring an EV with your ski friends? Because your EV has such shit mileage that you gotta charge. Well, uh, take a look at the truck here, everyone. <laughs> we got the Anchor Soul XF3800 over here with a 240 amp charger with the V4 charger itself that's charging. And if you look at my driver's side window, you I bought a little cord that's sitting through the driver's side. Okay, hold on, I'm gonna interrupt. They got a hybrid with 600 miles. This has 200 miles normal range. You bring your Anchor Solix battery, you bring your charger, and you secretly stealth keep your battery warm to get extra mileage to make it down the mountain. That's hashtag my F3800 Anchor experience. So I hope I win that little raffle. But yeah, uh, let me check it out before it gets super serious. Wait, can you charge my Tesla for me? I can charge your Tesla, actually. <laughs> okay. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the new Anchor Solix F3800 review. Uh, yeah, I'm Sean, I do a bunch of tech reviews, so let's go into these new products that were successfully funded on Kickstarter, and now they're publicly available to anyone who wants to place an order. So let's look at what we got in the package. So first and foremost, you can see I got two Anchor Solix F3800s. On top of this F3800 is the expansion battery. So for those who are a little newer and are on the fence to whether they should buy this or not, the F3800 stands for 3.8 kilowatts of power. Now for reference, the Lightning truck, you can see that this is a EV uh, Ford Lightning that has a 100 kilowatt hour battery. So one of the major use cases for this is an alternative uh, to the power grid when you're charging this either at public stations or charging it with a 220 volt in the US for your house. So in the package that we got from the Kickstarter, Again, with two of them, this expandable battery, and you can connect up to six. In terms of the build quality, the Anchor Solix brand has been in the home power market for a while now, and you can just see the build and design quality team has it's just done a phenomenal job. I do a lot of DIY projects, and this is just, I can't build this myself. It would require a team of engineers. So even for something like this connector from the Anchor Solix to the F3800 here, Let's take a look close out. You can see it's their own like, custom of having pins, grounding wires, charging ports, and these are the battery inputs and outputs for the expansion battery. And then you can see here in terms of how much they finished it, this covers from all the rain, some of the water. It's not, I wouldn't leave this in the rain uh, if, if possible. I'd add like barbecue covers or motorcycle covers or tarps as much as I could just to not risk it. As a little safety mechanism there, really nice button to make sure that it's nice, snug, and fit in there. So you can see a bunch of fans. I'm gonna unplug this battery. And then you can see the XT60 connectors here. These are for the solar panels that you can see on the floor in the beginning of this video. And this can charge the F3800 as well. So I think it's like 2000 plus watts that you can get from your solar panels. Now closer here is a panel that some of us may have and may need to use and open that up to connect to your house if you need the backup inlet uh, generator. So this is a replacement for gas generators, but this will connect to the Anchor home power panel that is not yet shipped. That will come later this year. For those who got the Kickstarter, it's gonna take a while. Which I'm gonna lift this up. One thing I wanna comment with this Anchor Solix is they're heavy. This is about, I would say like 60, 70 pounds. I don't know the exact specs on this, but there's two handles on there, really nice branding on it, a nice on and off button, and about nothing else, except if I turn this. Folks, you gotta be pretty strong. Really nice rubber feet here, and a light that you can activate in the app. The Anchor Solix F3800 comes in four, two caster wheels and two more like luggage wheels on the back. And if we zoom into the top, it has an easy tow handle, which honestly reminds me of a really cool luggage case. So push this down. You can get it down all the way flush there. Press the button and it will go enough up so that you can grab it right there. And then in theory, kind of put some oomph with me on it. You can roll it. It's heavy. Batteries are simply heavy beasts. Yeah. And uh, you don't want this falling on your foot, so please be very careful with it. But the handle is a very nice touch. And similar to how portable battery, you got the handle here, the handle here, and you got the rubber feet so that this battery can also lean on its side. 
slowly like that as well i thought about maybe at a campsite where you could just like sit on it it feels extremely sturdy uh, on here and it can be used on its side it's a lipo battery it's not lead acid it's not going to spill one of the things i didn't see on a lot of youtube videos is people looking at the bottom of the solix so this has a handle here a little spring handle so that if you were using it in the landscape orientation for lack of a better term you could in theory carry it but if you're camping i'm assuming if you need this much power you're not solo camping i found ways to carry this with its weight but it's still a, it's still a heavy beast all right practice those deadlifts my goodness um you got the spring handle here you got the casters and the last thing about build quality that i really appreciate about this is there's casters that lock and they're pretty easy to get to um once you uh have it set in the position that you want it. The power ports and power selection. So at the end of the day, this is a 3.8 kilowatt battery on top of an inverter that has a selection of outports depending on where you're uh, getting your anchor shipped. This is the US version here. So you can see we have your standard US ports that are 120 volt and 20 amp max. Then you have your 240 volt selection here at 25 amps. So this is actually the NEMA 1540 connection over here and a couple of overcharge protection ports. So, and you have an on button over here. Many use cases for this. One thing that uh, is in the manual that this is also, it's not only just a charger uh, and has portable power, but it's also an uninterruptible power supply. So meaning during any blackouts or very quick power outages that you might have, you could have pass through power on this. In terms of how much a wattage of this can give out, it's at 6,000 watts. Now you can combine two of them together. Yeah, I got it to charge EVs, use it in my RV, and get additional uh, uninterrupted power supplies, and just get a portable generator there. EV enthusiasts who want the portable charging of this, it actually uh, is not as straightforward as a setup. It really depends on the charger that you bring to charge into the Anchor Solix. This is a Vivor charger with a NEMA 1450 charging port. Pay close attention, again, in the manual, this is a 240 volt uh, outlet that goes 25 amp max. If you were to buy the Ford charger that comes with the Lightning, this is 40 amps, and you can't really change this uh, on its own. You don't have a smart app for it but the Vivor does. So let's zoom back down into this. And uh, this one you can control with your phone and the app specifications. Not only that to EV charge, make sure you double tap and turn on this AC power section here, that little light. Double tap that twice to make sure that it is on a continuous discharge mode for EVs. You can see this is green or blue and flashing over here so that this light is uh, charging. And let's check the discharge rate. We filmed this video as 100% and it's already been about three or four minutes. You can tell that the discharge function is pretty high off here. Um, I actually like that this is ability to deliver 5,000, like 6,000 watts. It's advertising pretty close. 5,725 to 30 watts here of power delivery at 60 Hertz wavelength for that and is connected to the phone. And this tells me that there's a remaining 0.4 hours here left on the battery. So that tells me that you can deliver this much power to your truck in the span of uh, only an hour. And I've done the math. With this, plus the expansion battery that I have in the original setup that we saw earlier in the video, this is about 3.8 times 2, so 7.6 kilowatts uh, delivered to this 100 kilowatt truck. So do the math for yours. If you have a Tesla and it's a 50 kilowatt battery, then do seven or 3.8 divided by 50 to see how much percentage that you're gonna get back. It does work. I have a couple of footage on it and I've even skied with this to get me enough about two hour drive away to add that 12 miles, which doesn't actually add miles, but it helps to address the power loss in the battery capacity once it's winter skiing weather. I lost 12 miles bringing this truck up to Crystal Mountain Resort over here in the PNW. This setup with the Anchor Solix gave me 12 miles back. I was able to drive two hours there, two hours back without having to stop by a charger. So having to use a public charger, that's 50 cents a kilowatt for many of these places versus 13 cents a kilowatt for the house. 
To charge this fully at home, $8. To charge it at a public station fully or just enough, easily about another $30 to $40, $50 to charge this fully. I just need to get enough to get home. So in many ways, it does save me money. The real value to that, probably $20, $30 of savings every time I discharge this battery completely. But it's also the convenience. While we're skiing, have this locked up or even locked up in the car and charge. It's worked pretty wonderfully for my use case. Although it's still kind of hilarious how little. 12 miles? Like at the end of the day, 12 miles after all this? But that's EV's problem. That's not anything to do with the battery technology. So let's talk accessories here. You can see I have four 200 watt anchor solar panels. They scuff up. They're designed to get scratched. And I've already scratched anchor solar because I haven't tried my darndest to not uh, scratch them up with camping. So while you're moving it around into your RV, into your camp rig, into the back of your bed of your truck, or in the back of your truck, I recommend the moving blanket number one because these things, they're very sturdy and they help move furniture. So that's been really handy. As for the other accessory, believe it or not, I've lost the charging cord for one of my anchor solixes already. But thankfully this is a universal power three prong supply. You can get these anywhere. 15 amp, 125 volts. Uh, these are so common. You can probably pull out the back of one of your monitors that you're not using or TVs and plug it and it'll deliver the exact power in the wall to your battery. But bring a couple of these. There's no reason to only use the two that came with your pack. That's another accessory I recommend. But the real one I'm recommending here is a nice and handy motorcycle jack. These things are super heavy if you want to see me struggle lifting it again. And this here motorcycle jack is super handy because the exact height of this is the bed of the truck or the passenger side of the truck, wherever you want to put this, or it's higher than even my van height that I need. So with one little kick of the pedal, you can bring it all the way down and push your anchor solix down. Or if you fit this, it's a bottle jack under there and that can lift about three to four tons, which is more than enough for an anchor solix. So let's see this in action real quick. The last part, simply roll it on. Use those plastic covers, feet on this anchor solix, and like that. Move this all the way in. The good part about those rubber, uh, they bowed it here and the rubber feet kind of help it from stop. Sliding so much, but let's use that handle. Let's roll her in. Stop it right there. Easy to handle. Cover that, right? The ports are standing up, but I'm only like that for this demo. So why would you want this versus a DIY project? Well, I have something to show you. This here is a Nissan Leaf battery pack that determined to be 50% um, life left. So it's not good for car, for motor, but still a ton of energy capacity. I got this for $600. The problem with that versus a finished project, which is the F3800, is simply cost. For what you get for this, it's pricey. I paid about $2,400 for the Anchor Solix um, for 3.8 kilowatts or another 3.8 kilowatts. So you're talking about seven, uh, 7, 7.6 kilowatts versus Nissan Leaf capacity end of life, which is about 10 kilowatts really comes down to the cost of kilowatts um, per dollar, but also the finished product. But one roadblock I've run into is that the inverters for this range about $1,500 to $2,500. Not only that, but you'd have to wire it up, do a lot of custom work with um, Arduino boards, um, and get the inverters and the solar panels. And there's something to be said about the finish the plug and play aspect. It's not supposed to replace your full home if it's your like your main home power generation, but it's supposed to be the power in between that's not mounted or stuck on a wall. Everything else has worked great for me. I appreciate the power protections I've had. I've tripped it a couple times already trying to charge this truck. I really do love the F3800 and I can't wait to see what more projects I can power through. Leads us to more future projects that you might want for this. Now at your campsites, you can charge your e-scooters, your e-bikes, or any more of those use cases. But we'll save that for a future video. Uh, Anchor, thank you for completing that Kickstarter project. Can't wait to power this project. Help to power the EV. Really small battery, really huge battery. 
a good intermediary project um, that I can't wait to get more expansion battery packs for and combine them together to get 12,000 watts. What's that like and what can we power then? In the meantime, everyone, enjoy your camping winter season and thanks for watching and uh, we'll see you in the next video.